I'm Dan Casey, and this is Nerdist News. Film fans were dealt a devastating blow this weekend when Bill Paxton, one of the greatest character actors in film history, passed away at age 61. Paxton's affable, easygoing charm made him a standout in every film he was in, regardless of the size or scope of the role. Now, over his nearly 40-year career, he starred in movies that ranged from intimate and affecting dramas to some of the biggest blockbusters of all time. But we here at Nerdist will remember him most fondly for his contributions to the world of genre filmmaking. Looking at Paxton's filmography will bring up a seemingly endless string of classic roles in a string of truly classic genre films. Simply put, if there's another actor who not only squared off against the Terminator, Aliens, and the Predator, but also managed to steal the spotlight from them, we sure can't think of one. So to pay tribute to this undeniable heavyweight of geek cinema, we're going to run down just a few of our favorite Bill Paxton roles right now. Now, Paxton got his start in the film industry behind the camera when he was hired as a teenager to build sets for low-budget schlock king Roger Corman. But it was on these sets that he met another young hopeful by the name of James Cameron, and the two forged a lifelong friendship that would come to define both of their careers. In a recent interview, Paxton actually recalled the day on a Corman set when Cameron started pitching him his idea for a movie about a killer robot sent back in time from the future. Paxton encouraged the idea, and just a few years later, he found himself appearing in The Terminator as one of the cackling street punks Arnie first meets upon arriving in 1984. From there, Cameron started using Paxton almost as like a good luck charm, giving him small but memorable supporting parts in nearly every one of his films. Paxton was easily one of the best parts of True Lies, playing an ordinary guy pretending to be a secret agent who runs afoul of Arnold Schwarzenegger, a secret agent pretending to be an ordinary guy. And for every person who didn't want to be drawn like one of their French girls dragged to Titanic in 1997, Paxton offered a nice respite from all the unrelenting romance. He's the secret MVP of that record-breaking block Blockbuster bookending the film as an obsessed treasure hunter with no qualms about dragging an elderly woman out to the middle of the ocean just to find a valuable necklace. And if you can find the alternate ending online, watch it. He's amazing in that. But of course, Paxton's most iconic collaboration with Cameron will forever be his role as the quippy, twitchy space marine Hudson in 1986's Aliens. For any other actor, standing out while playing against one of the greatest movie villains of all time and one of the greatest movie heroes of all time would be an impossibly tall order. But Paxton made it seem absolutely effortless, making Hudson simultaneously sleazy but fun. Plus, he delivers one of the most memorable lines ever, a line he actually improvised on the fly. That's it, man. It's game over, man. It's game over. That's right. The best line in any James Cameron movie ever wasn't written by James Cameron. That was pure Paxton. Now, while Cameron usually liked to cast Paxton as charming jerks, he never turned him into a full-fledged villain. But that doesn't mean Paxton didn't have the ability to go completely bad when the role required it. He had some seriously great villains on his resume, like Chet, the cigar-chomping bully of a big brother from Weird Science, who suffers what might be one of the greatest and most disgusting comeuppances of all time when he's magically transformed into a giant talking turd. And more recently, he achieved a feat of cinematic villainy that seemed almost impossible, portraying a Marvel bad guy who wasn't instantly forgettable. Ooh, sick burn. His role as John Garrett, the undercover Hydra spy in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., rivals Loki for the title of most memorable villain in the MCU. But easily, and I mean easily, his greatest villain role was as Severin, a psychotic vampire gang member in Catherine Bigelow's cult classic, Near Dark. Paxton manages to make Severin equal parts hilarious and horrifying. And if you haven't seen the movie yet, it's totally worth checking out. It came out the same year as the better known The Lost Boys, but for our money, this is the vampire gang movie from 1987 that truly deserves serves cult classic status. And speaking of cult classics, Paxton was a quiet champion of small and weird cinematic experiences. He took on a slew of supporting roles in some truly bizarre movies like 1990's The Dark Backward, where he plays an accordion playing Garbage Man, and 1995's The Last Supper, where he plays a murderous desert storm vet. But his coolest and weirdest movie was one he believed in so much he actually stepped behind the camera to make sure it got made. Frailty. The gothic thriller about a simple farmer who suddenly believes that God is ordering him to kill people became the actor's directorial debut after he couldn't get it made through traditional studio means. The movie is a stunningly confident first film, scary and thoughtful in a way that few horror films ever managed to achieve. And Paxton's starring role as the man driven mad by divine intervention is absolutely one of his best. He never lets you know for sure if he's really talking to God or if he's just gone insane. But while we love his small stuff, no discussion about Paxton's career would be complete without talking about his work in the world of blockbusters. Now, in addition to Titanic, Paxton had roles in huge movies like Tombstone, Apollo 13, and The Edge of Tomorrow. But maybe his biggest impact was upon a generation of aspiring storm chasers with 1996's Twister. That movie is probably best remembered by the public at large for that CGI flying cow, but 
It clearly left an impression on some kids who grew up to follow in the footsteps of Paxton's character, Bill the Extreme Harding. Over 200 storm chasers got together yesterday to spell out Paxton's initials in GPS coordinates at Tornado Alley, the main location of Twister. But no matter who you were, there was probably a Bill Paxton movie that you truly loved. And while we wish we could cover them all here, there were just way too many of them. The guy was a touchstone of classic cinema for 35 years, and his presence will be sorely missed. Summing up the impact of his loss is nearly impossible, so maybe the best thing we can do is just let him do it in his own words. It's game over, man. It's game over. Game over, but never forgotten. Rest in peace, Bill Paxton. And if you'd like to share any of your favorite Bill Paxton roles or memories, please share them in the comments below.